Hello everyone, welcome to 5 Minute Scientific Talk. For this video, we will discuss some common knowledge about the GCC and make files, such as the concepts of the compile and link, some particular parameters to find the libraries, and the static link and the dynamic link. Let's dive into details. Let's start with the source code and the machine code. There are two different codes different, from different perspectives. For the source code, such as the .c and .cpp file, those files are easy to understandable for the human being. And for the machine code, it is generally the binary code. And those codes are easier to understand from the perspective of the computer, or such as the machine. And the, for the GCC, it represents the GNU C compiler, which is a kind of common compiler for C file and CPP file. The goal of the uh, compiler is to transform the code from the source code to the machine code. In particular, it contains two steps. First is called the compiling, and the second is called the linking. For the compiling, it is easier to understand if we have a dot c file and we want to run it on computer we need to compile it to the to particular format that can be loaded by the computer and for the linking it is a little bit more complicated for example if we have multiple dot c file and we want to compile and then link them together to one executable file and to do something like this run some code so we need the we need to link them together here those two steps can construct the whole process of the transform or we call that or usually we call them the compiling that is the main job for the compiler with the idea of compiling and linking in mind we might want to ask how does GCC work to compile and link a program? And we will show the particular case later on. Here we just, just show the idea. For example, we can use the GCC command and input options. For example, we use dash C to just compile the file, or if we do not use this, we just combine the compile and link together and get the executable file directly. Uh, anyway, so we use GCC and some options, and then the output is the uh, object file, or the, which is a kind of uh, binary file, or just or the executable file, or some particular library. We will discuss this later. And if we have this thing, this GCC command, for uh, then in a real project that contains multiple of .c file, in that case. For every one, we might use a particular GCC command, so the pros compiling process will become complicated when for a real project, and especially for the large scale project. And here is a question How could we express those building precise in a standard way and to express the dependency between different? A different source file in a natural way. For example, we have this .c file. It might depend on particular libraries or particular a particular binary a particular object file. And this library is kind of a machine code, and it is created by a particular another .c file or another side of .c file. So in that case, we might need to compile this, this part first, and then compile this part first. So uh, secondly, so there is an issue of dependency. How can we describe this in a natural way? The idea is a make file. And the, we will show a particular example later on here. We just discuss the general idea. Actually, the idea here is really simple. For make file, it just it is just a set of rules. 
for every for every rule, it is combined. It is constructed by two parts. First is a target, which can be the name of the, this rule, and this is a key part. And the value part is the dependency of this target. This dependency can be uh, can be the file name or the other target name. For example, this the, uh, this part is the command. By this rule, it represents that when the dependency is satisfied, we will execute the command here. So we can list several targets in the make file. For example, we, this, if we call this target one and we have target two, and the dependency of target two and the command of target two, if we execute, if we want to execute this rule, we need to first satisfy uh, if we put the depend if we put the target two as the dependency here. So it means that if we want to execute the target one, we need to first satisfy the target two. So we will execute the we will check the target two. And if the dependency is satisfied, we will execute the command here. And then we will go back to execute the command of the target one. Basically, that is idea of how make file works, and let us look at several real examples to get a. Let's look at a real example about how the make file work. Works for this example, we have the main file, main dot c. It calls a hello function. Here, it, this is a really simple project, and so if we want to project, if we want to compile this project firstly we need several uh, we need several rules here in make file as discussed just now for example for the first rule the target name is main and it depend on the it depends on the main.o which is an object file of the main.c and the hello func o which is an object file of the hello func.c and the header file when those dependents exist in the are satisfied and we call this command so this is a target name for another rule. This rule is here. For this rule, we want to, we need the object file of the main.c. And if so, it represents that if there exists, of, if the main.c exists, we execute this command. We use dash c to represent that we just want to compile the source file. The dash c only run pre precise compile and assemble steps. So, for the compiling step, it actually also includes several sub steps like pre precise compile and assemble. We will not dive into details here. And another rule is the hello func.o, which depends on the hello func.c. And if there exists this file, we execute this command. And another rule is clean. We, we don't need any dependency here, just execute the command directly. Let's show how it works. We just need to type make. And so it shows those, it, it will execute those three GCC commands. They first compile C into main.c into the object file and similar for hellofunk.c. And then we link those two parts together into the executable file. Actually, so we can get an executable file. There are several types of uh, binary file. Uh, the first one is something like this. Ex we can execute them directly. The second is this dot o, which is just the object file. And another is a kind of a library or archive in a format of the archive. We will discuss them later. So anyway, this is just an example of make file. We can run it in a more efficient way. And there are multiple resources online to teach you how to write an efficient make file.
But anyways, idea is to construct a set a site of rules that contains the uh, target name and their dependency. For example, in this case, if we comment out those parts and only use this one. So for the make file, it provides some in explicit explanation for those object file, which means if this main, if this ex executable file or this target depends dependent on the dot main file, it will compile the, it will execute those set of rules in automatically. So it will transfer the dot save file into the object file automatically. For example, we execute the clean here. So for this new make file, we only have this one. I mean, we don't, we don't, we only need to use this rule to trigger those commands. Let me, let me show you. Yeah, you could say that those, actually we only provide this rule and those two commands are triggered in an automatic way. So basically we just show some general ideas of the make file and how it works and why it is more clear to express the dependency in a more natural way and how to list a set of rules for a complicated project. Uh, if the, our project become more complicated, we actually just need to use more set of rules here and to show how to compile it. Let's look at those three parameters. First is dash uh, uppercase I, this one. And second is dash uppercase L and the dash lowercase L. For those two parameters, they represent the specific directory. So the value here should be a directory. And what are the differences? For the first one, it represents the directory of the header files, such as all kinds of file with dot H. Those represent the header files that contains all kinds of definition of the functions or, or different in, in interfaces. So it represents that when we, pre, when we compile the project or this particular .c file, in which place we will find the, those interfaces. So for example, in this input section of the GCC file, we say, uh, 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 so for example, we want to uh, compile a particular uh, file such as abc.c, and in this file, it includes include a specific .h file. Where should we find this .h file? And we need to use this slash lower uppercase to i parameter to tell the GCC that this file locates in this, this directory. And for the slash uppercase L, it represents the directory for all kinds of libraries. And in the input section of the GCC, for example, we might use some expression like this and then put the libraries directory here and then use the dash so lowercase l for, and such as particular name of the library to tell the gcc we want to load we want to the gc uh, I, I mean our file need to link to this library and where where is the location of this library it is represented by this directories by this dash uppercase L parameter. So basically those three parameters are really important for compile projects that contain different, different header file. Or if, you, if other people want to use your project, you need to provide specific header file 
such as include file and the library file and the which library will be used by other project. Let's say a real example and understand how it works. In this example, we show how to update the make file and show how, how can we use the parameter such as the parameter to find the library and the header file. Well, the main difference for this working directory is that we put the hello function and hello func dot h into the library. Then we show how to compile those functions and generate an archive file. And then when we compile this main file, we show how it can link with that archive file. This is a old make file and that we use this as an example to show how to update this old make file step by step to make it work with the new project layout. So let's start here for this main. We need the main dot o object and then here we need a new library. We call we can call that hello funk library and we then update this rule. Here the dependency is the dot save file in my lib directory. Then here we also need to add my lib and then generate an object file in this my lib directory. Then we use another new command to generate the archive file. It is AR commands. We do not dive into details here, but anyway, it can help us to combine several object file into an archive file. So archive file, we can do it like this. And this is dot a file, which is an archive file. And it, it, the input for this archive file is this object file. So how about this part? And we don't need this object file. We actually need an archive file. And we need to define this archive file. We need first define, we need to specify its header. So we have to find its header in this directory. We have to find this library. It is still in this directory and what is the name of the library? It is called uh, hello. Oh, we also need to specify the directory to find the header file here. Since in this main function, we use a relative path to find the header file. Therefore, in make this main in this command, we need to specify the include include directory. And when we clean things, we need to remove things in the my deep directory. Remove all object file and remove all remove all archive file and all object file. Yeah, that we test it. Oh, there is an issue here. It shows that we could not find this library. There, it is a little bit tricky. When we define the archive file, we need to add a prefix such as lib. In this way, we specify it is a library. But when we fill in the name of the library here, we just need to fill in the part between the library and the and the correct characters before this dot a. So it is still this part. And that we do it again. Yeah, it works as expected. And if we execute the main function, we can get the correct results and we can still clean it normally. So if we want if we want to know what is the current directory of the uh, default header file, default header directory and default library, we can use this. Uh, dash v options for GCC. And if you add it, you could see here, it prints more details 
So we compile each command. You could see here the include search directory, the include search directory. And when we add a specific include directory, we can get, I mean, there is new directory here. Let's so basically that's how the uh, GCC works to link with another new directory. Yeah, you could see here. Since we add, since we use this command, use this option, we can see there is a new directory here for the include. The idea of static library and shared library is straightforward. Usually we use the .a file to specify the static library and the .iso file to represent the shared object of, we may call that shared library. So what is the difference? For example, we have a library, specific library, and then we are, there are two specific object files that use this library such as a.o and b.o. Then for the static library, if we compile the, this object into a execut executable file, we need to, in the executable file, we need to combine those two libraries together and to, for example, generate it, execute A. And similarly, we need to copy this dot A file into the executable file and to generate the ex execute B. In this way, the final executable file is a little bit large. Since every object file that uses this library will need this library in their final ex executable file. So for shared libraries, the idea is we do not need to copy this shared library we just need to keep the specific table that shows the position or that shows the location of this shared library. So the final executable is, sorry, is a little bit smaller in this case. For example, we have the a.o that is some specific function defining this shared library. And we have the b.o also use this function defined here. Then in the final executable file, we have executable A and executable B. Those two executable files are more smaller. Basically, we don't need to copy. I mean, there is just one .iso file in the disk for the size of those two files is just the, the size of this ob object file plus some necessary information that point to this .iso file. And the another extra thing is that when we use ISO file, we need to specify the location of this ISO file. I mean, where is the directory? For the GCC, it, also, it pre prefer to use this to use this way, I mean the dynamic link to generate an executable function, uh, executable file. So if there is, a, for example, library something dot a and library something dot o, if they have the same name, the GCC will search the this .iso file firstly, and then if it does not exist, does not exist, then it will use this .a file. So the dynamic link is always preferred, but we need to pay attention to specify the location of the shared library because the GCC need to first load this shared library when they compile at or ex execute the final ex executable file. And another benefit of the shared library is that we can decouple this .iso file with this file. So which means when we update this, we do not necessarily update this file. 
So it is more convenient. We just need to update this link and make it to link to the new dot ISO file, and that is okay. So there are two benefits. One is it is more smaller, and another is that we can decouple decouple the source code, decouple the library file with the project that is that file. A command that generates the shared object file is not complicated. We just need this shared parameter and this FPIC parameter to generate the shared library, which is ended with .iso, and we then link it here. So when we create the uh, executable for the main function, we will use this shared library. And besides, we can also combine several .iso file into a large .iso file. That is how we created this shared library. And in the previous example, when we create the static library, we need to use this AR command, which is a little bit different here. But anyway, there are still different types of uh, binary file. One is used for the static link, and another is used for the dynamic link. Uh, 